In previous videos, we have seen and programmed various events in web panels, such as the click, double click, right button, etc., associated with controls in the user interface, that is to say, the form. Here we will see the events in more detail, as well as where they are executed and in what order. Every web application will be run on a machine, such as a PC, notebook, or smart device with internet access. From this machine, the user will access the application using a browser. At the other end is a server, which will store all the application programs generated by Genexus. Among them are the programs corresponding to web panels, for example, the program generated for the View Customers web panel. What happens when we invoke the web panel from the browser for the first time? This is known as making a GET. The client will prompt the server to run the web panel and send an HTML file that tells the browser what to draw on the screen, and with what data, in what format, and so on. The question is, what did the program run on the server to create this HTML file? First, the start event. In our case, it's where the grid variable is assigned, an image of the plane. Second, the refresh event. Since it's a web panel with a grid with base table, it will cause an access to the corresponding table, immediately running the load event for each record whose data is retrieved to be added as a grid line in the HTML that will be sent to the client. That is to say, if there are 10 records in the base table, the load event will be executed 10 times in a row, once for each record. What happens when the user enters a value in the filter variable? Remember that by default, the variables that take part in conditions cause an automatic refresh. That is to say, the screen needs to be reloaded. The web panel must be executed again on the server. The operation that sends some data to the server so that it uses them when running the program again and returning the result is known as a POST. But, what is executed on the server and in what order? First, the start event, once again by assigning the plane's image to the variable. Second, reading the data on screen, which was sent in the POST. There, the value given by the user to the customer full name variable is obtained. Third, a refresh is made followed immediately by the corresponding load events. For each record in the base table, customer, it will be checked whether the condition is met. That is to say, if its name contains BE. If so, the load event is executed and the file containing the result is added as a grid line. When the process ends, the file is returned to the client's browser, which draws this data on the screen. In general, a POST occurs every time an action executed on the client requires going back to the server, for example, because the data has to be refreshed. Actions of this type can include pressing the Enter key or a button or control associated with a user event. For example, when the user clicks on the plane image corresponding to a line, a POST will be made by sending the line data to the server, including the variable of the fixed part. So, what will be executed on the server? The start event, the reading of the data sent, the code of the event that caused the post, in our case a click, the refresh event, and the load event for each line. Since in our case the event calls another web panel, the steps that follow will not be executed, the refresh and load events. Without going into detail, the result will be as if a GET was made of this other web panel, which, before executing its start event, reads the parameter sent to it, customer ID. Next, it executes the start, refresh, and load events, returning the file to the client to draw the new screen. 
Now let's see what happens when there's more than one grid. For example, we combine the previous two web panels in one and change the code of the image click event and we have the following filter in the conditions of the second grid. Upon calling this web panel from the client, the following events will be executed in this order. The start event, the general refresh event, which executes its code if it was programmed, and calls the refresh and load events of each grid. In this way, it calls the refresh event of the first grid in the form. In turn, it calls the load event of that grid once for each record. Next, the refresh event of the second grid in the form. In turn, it calls the load event of that grid once for each record that meets the conditions. For this reason, in the get, since the customer variable is empty, no lines will be loaded for the second grid. On the other hand, when the user clicks on the plane image to see the flights of customer Smith, a post is made to the server and there the following is executed. The start event, the reading of screen data sent in the post, which in our case will be that of the line selected by the user, including the customer ID that is a hidden column. In addition, the screen variable, which will be local to the program, and in this case will be left empty. Next, the event that caused the post will be executed. In our case, it's a click on the image. The variable local to the program, customer, is assigned the value of customer ID, read as data, in the previous step. Next, the general refresh. The refresh and load events of the customer's grid, since it has a condition with like, and the variable customer full name is empty, all the records in the base table will meet the conditions and will be loaded in the grid. Lastly, the refresh and load events of the flight grid. Knowing that this grid is filtering by this condition, it will show only the seats of flights where customer ID is found with value 1. Therefore, Upon clicking, the user will see the following in his browser. And finally, it's worth mentioning that not every action performed by the user and associated with an event will cause a post to the server. Some can be solved in the client itself. For example, a user or enter event that hides a control can be solved in the client. In this way, we've covered what events will be executed and in what order. For grids without base table, the events and the order will be the same. The only difference will be the number of times that the load event will be executed. We will see this in the following videos.